In this question, we're asked to show that there is no angle theta that satisfies the equation 4 cos squared theta minus 2 sine squared theta minus sine theta plus 8 is equal to 0, giving a mathematical reason to explain how you come to your conclusion. Looking at this question, all I can identify to do is that this is a quadratic in cos squared and sine squared, so to try and solve this as if there were solutions uh, to theta. In order to solve this as if there were solutions to theta, I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. The way I'm going to use this is that looking at this quadratic, I've got a first order term of sine theta. That means I can't substitute that out. So I'm going to try and remove the cos squared theta by finding an appropriate substitution for it. To do that, I'm just going to take sine squared theta across the other side so that I get cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. Now by substituting this into the quadratic, I'll have a quadratic in just sine. So we get 4 times 1 minus sine squared theta minus 2 sine squared theta minus sine theta plus 8 equals 0. So tidying this up, we get 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times minus sine is minus sine 4 sine squared theta minus 2 sine squared theta minus sine theta plus 8. So collecting terms, I get minus 6 sine squared theta uh, minus sine theta. And then we get minus 12 theta, uh, plus 12 theta, sorry, plus 12 even. Now to make life easier for myself, I want a positive quadratic term here. So I'm just going to multiply everything by minus 1. So that I get 6 sine squared theta plus sine theta plus 12 equal to 0. And that last one isn't plus 12, that should be minus 12. So just adjust that. Okay, so at this point, if you don't like factorising with sine theta, you can of course rewrite this as 6s squared plus s minus 12 equals 0. It can make it a little bit easier to factorise and just focus on the actual factorisation. If I do 6 times minus 12, I get minus 72. I want to have two factors which have a difference of 1. And so if I had plus 9 times minus 8, this would give us what we what I need. So I'm going to rewrite this now as 6s squared theta, that's 6s squared, plus 9s minus 8s minus 12, equal to 0. Factorising the first pair of terms, I can take 3s out. So I get left with 2s plus 3. And then the second term, if I take out minus 4, I get also 2s minus 3 equal to 0. And then finally, so that should be a plus 3 there. Finally, take the 2s plus 3. That is a common factor to both of those terms. So I get 2s plus 3 outside as a common factor. And then inside the bracket, I get the coefficients of those two brackets acting as my final term. So 3s minus 4 equal to 0. So what we end up with is that we have 2 sine theta plus 3 equals 0. So now if I add 3 and I divide by 2, just going to do that in one step to speed it up, I get sine theta equals, sorry it shouldn't be plus 3, it should of course be minus 3. So we should get minus 3 over 2. If I do the same with 3s, so I get 3 sine theta minus 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides and I'm going to divide by 3. So I get sine theta equals 4 thirds. 
Now, at this point, I would usually solve this equation. If you try and solve this equation, it will come up with a maths error on your calculator. And so in the question we wrote back to that, it says, show that there's no angle theta that satisfies the equation, given a mathematical reason to explain how you come to your conclusion. Well, the reason we can't get a solution here is, of course, that the graph and the function of sine theta lays between minus 1 and 1. So sine theta never gets any smaller than minus 1 and minus 3 over 2 is smaller than that. It also never gets any bigger than 1, and 4 thirds is bigger than 1. So by saying that sine theta lies between minus 1 and 1, we can say there are no solutions for theta. OK then, well let's have a look at part b. Part B says, find all the values of x in the range 0 less than or equal to 180 degrees that satisfy sine 2x minus 75 equals minus 0.515. Okay, so first thing I do in this problem is to transform the range so I know actually what range I need to find solutions over before I solve this algebraic equation. So we say 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 180. I want to know what do I solve 2x minus 5 in that range. So first of all I'm going to times the interval by 2. So I get 0 less than or equal to 2x less than or equal to 360. So I know now that if I wanted to solve for 2, 2x, I'd just be solving in this range. And then I'm going to add subtract 75 from this interval. So I now know that actually the range of over which I want to solve this trigonometrically is for 2x minus 75. And this is going to be between minus 75 and 285. Okay, so solving this equation, sine 2x minus 75 equal to minus 0.515. If I take the inverse sine function of both sides, I get left with 2x minus 75. Taking the inverse sine of minus 0.515, uh, Sorry, just having one problem with the calculator. So you should get an answer of minus 31.0 degrees. Now this minus 31 may not appear to lie in this range here that we were originally given, but it is actually lying in the range that I'm given here for the solutions that I want to find for 2x minus 75. Now, if I use a cast diagram, I can find my paired solution. So this was my principal solution. The principal solution, of course, is the solution that your calculator initially gives you. So what I want to do, here's my cast diagram, C-A-S-T. I'm going to go with minus 31. Now, usually 31 would come up into the sine. Because it's negative, I'm going to go down into the tan quadrant. So that's an uh, uh, an angle of 31 degrees, and I'm interested in the angle all the way round to that angle, which will be 180 plus 31, so 211.0. Now, you should check to see if you can get any further solutions. So once you've got your principal solution, which is the solution of your calculator, and your paired solution, which is the solution of the cast diagram, you should add or subtract 360 degrees because it's, a cost, because it's the sine graph and it repeats every 360 degrees. You should add or subtract 360 degrees to each of these two values and see if any more uh, angles lie in this range, minus 75 to 285. Now if I subtract 360 degrees from either of these, you can see it's going to fall outside the range. If I add 360 degrees to either of these, it is also going to fall outside the range. So at this point, I've got all the solutions that are needed. So all that remains now is to solve the algebraic equation. We do this by first adding 75 degrees to each of the solutions so that I get 2x is equal to 
44.0 degrees and 286.0 degrees. And then we're going to divide our solutions by 2 to give us that x is 22.0 and 143 point zero degrees all to one decimal place. Okay, finally let's have a look at part C. Part C says to find all the values of phi in the range zero less than or equal to phi less than or equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so here we have an equation for tan phi plus 7 sine phi that equals 0. Now, I want this is going to be a difficult pro problem to solve because we've got a mixture of trigonometric functions. The way to approach this is to think, well, okay, well, tan, we know that tan, I'm actually going to write this as theta just for argument's sake because I'm more familiar with using theta. Tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. So could we write this as 4 sine phi over cos phi plus 7 sine phi? Now when I look at this, I think, okay, well, this cos phi on the bottom, that's a problem. So let's multiply everything through by cos phi to get rid of the denominator and then worry what to do. So I get 4 sine phi plus 7 sine phi cos phi. And although it might not initially look like it, we're now in a really good position to solve this equation because actually this is a second order equation because I've got two functions multiplied together here. I can, I can actually factorize, it's important here that we factorize, not divide through by, but if I factorize by sine phi, I then get left with 4 plus 7 cos phi equals 0. And so I can now solve both sides of uh, both parts of this equation. So firstly, sine phi equals 0. If I take the inverse of sine, then I get that phi is equal to 0. If we do a cast diagram, it's a bit trivial because the cast diagram I'm going to measure nothing and so that's going to be a 180 degree mark and also we have to remember at 360 degrees we get sine phi and it's easier to do this I mean I can draw the cast diagram I'm going to reuse the cast diagram in a moment for cos but C A S T so this is 0 when I it's also 360 so measuring an angle of 0 gives me this line here, which is 180. So that's my second solution. And then just checking to see if we can fit any more in the range. Should have paid attention to the range because I'm so used to doing it in between 0 and 360. So we can take that 360 out and I just get 0 180. There you go. That makes more sense. Okay. So now I'll solve the second bracket. So I'll get 4 plus 7 cos phi equals 0. If I subtract 4 and divide by 7 on both sides, we get cos phi equals minus 4 sevenths. And then we take the inverse cos function so that we get phi. Phi is going to be equal to uh, so 124.8 degrees. Now, if I just check to see, get that's my principal solution for cos. If I was to do another solution for cos, what would happen is I'd measure into the cos quadrant. I'd go past 90 degrees, so here would be 124 degrees. So here's 124.8. I would then need the angle all the way around, which is 360 minus 124.8. Which is 235.2. 
and that's outside of my range. So finally, my answer is going to be 0, 124.8 and 180 degrees. Okay, really long trigonometry question there. Let's have a look at how it's marked. So starting off with part A. Part A, let me get my red pen. Part A, you get a method mark if you correctly demonstrate how to substitute in a value uh, 1 minus sine squared for cos squared. Please remember to show the actual substitution. There is then a method mark if you have demonstrated expansion of the bracket and trying to collect terms to form a quadratic to solve. There is then an answer mark given if you've got the two correct solutions for sine theta. And then finally, you get an exclamation mark if you have stated that sine theta must lie between minus 1 and 1, and for this reason there are no solutions. Part B. Part B awards uh, a B1 mark if you've got this first initial uh, principal solution of minus 31 degrees. And then finally, you get to one standalone mark each for the correct solutions to this equation. And that is it. And then finally, part C. Uh, part C gives you a method mark if you've got to this stage here where you've used tan theta in some way to get the expression 4 sine theta plus 7 sine theta cos theta. Uh, there is then an answer mark if you've got sine theta equals 0 and 4 plus 7 cos theta equals 0. And then finally, if you've got a uh, 0 and 180 degrees, you get one answer mark. And if you've got 124.8, you get another answer mark. Okay, well I hope all those solutions made sense and that you were able to follow how to mark those questions.